Well, you're saying, and I've read it, the same stuff's happening in Europe. The same global banksters run it all. Yeah, Europe's in bad shape. Um, but I, I believe countries like Brazil are probably interesting to look at, Chile. Uh, but you definitely want to get out of the worst offenders, and that would be the U.S. and the U.K. These two countries are have Nazi envy. You know, they go sit down every night and worship uh, their, their Nazi gods. And uh, when they start burning people in these incinerators, it'll be a total satisfaction for them. So I, I don't feel like I'd like to get burned in an incinerator to, uh, for J.P. Morgan's bonus pool. That's not what I'd like to do. Uh, I'm trying to stay as far away as I possibly can. I was in New York for the first time in 15 years uh, a few months ago, and that was about as much as I, time as I'd like to spend over there. Uh, it, it's just too dangerous. You know, if you love your family, uh, you should protect them. And that probably means getting the heck out of Dodge. Well, they are setting up checkpoints. And I remember going to Urban Warfare Drills right when they were getting rid of Glass-Steagall and gearing up for this and watching Marines training to take our guns and then watching them train to take U.S. citizens, put them on their knees and shoot them in the back of the head. It's all in Police Day 2000. And people saw that. And we're so freaked out, they accused me of having fake aircraft carriers land and, and, and hiring thousands of troops. And people just couldn't believe it was real. But the entire, the, the, the good news is, though, the military has woken up. The problem is they pick the crazies and the ones that want to pull triggers on Americans. They psychologically test them and make them cops. Uh, and it's weird. I mean, it's like somebody in make-believe, like one of my kids dresses up like a, Superman or something and is running around jumping off the furniture. I see these feds and cops now and they're like running around like they're in a movie strutting and staring and bugging their eyes out at everyone. And it's like, hey, lunatic, you work for the people that bring the drugs in and stage 9-11. You work for the terrorist. I mean, they, I just I can't I can't have punk coward scum looking at me like I'm bad all day when they work for the murdering criminals. And I know it. Murdering scum, murdering filth, murdering trash, terrorist killers of 9-11, setting up checkpoints everywhere. I indict you. I indict you. And if you're not evil and you're a cop, then speak out against it like the police that have sent us the internal stuff where they say the home, home, homeland security thing is for veterans, gun owners, libertarians, conservatives in the fetters. Of course it is. Of course it is. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Max. No, it's just going to be it's going to be very difficult to leave. The United States, especially when everyone is has a lien on them, when the debts are formally transferred, every American has a three hundred thousand dollar debt hanging over their head, and they will formalize that relationship legally in, in the courts, so that you are personally responsible, and you will not be able to leave that country until you do something about that three hundred thousand dollars. By the way, they're already starting the capital controls now. If you even have a couple silver coins, they pull you over, scream at you. If you're a Ron Paul supporter, they flip out. I mean, these are yeah, well, the new the new federal Gestapo. Then they're just beginning the process of penning you in. So less than 10 percent of Americans even have a passport. So if you're listening and you don't have even a passport, get yourself a passport. So at least you can get on a plane and leave if you have to or need to. And then from there, there are things you should do, like get a second passport, like Governor Jesse Ventura is talking about dual citizenship. At least he has some protection there with two passports. Everybody can do that if you put the work into it. If you value your family and you value your life, you need to have an exit strategy before they start uh, turning the ovens on and marching people into the incinerator because uh, they can't afford to keep the food stamps going anymore. But I guess they just psychologically test these guys because I see feds now and they literally are like a joke. They're bugging their eyes out, strutting around in black uniforms, trying to intimidate you. And I just instantly am like, as a man, like this is a criminal. This is a threat. I mean, I'm immediately my instincts like criminal, criminal. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean it's it, it's like a dog when it knows somebody's bad. It's like my, who are but they actually think they're good guys. It's real weird. They think you're that they're Jack Bauer and your wife is the terrorist. Look, as you know, every study going back many years shows that if you give people just a little bit of authority, they tend to run with it and become a megalomaniacs very quickly. And this is what happens when you give people who are not adequately trained 
a gun and a little bit of authority, for now they're suddenly uh, think that they are all powerful, all knowing uh, megalomaniacs, and the obvious results are in place. So this is not the way to build an economy. It's not the way to secure a nation. It's not the way to build good will, and it's not the way to compete. Nobody wins except the contractors and the mercenaries who finance the Gestapo in America. And uh, this is playing out in real time, and nobody can doubt it at this point. So again, if you value your life, you need to figure out an exit strategy. Yeah, well, I'm going to stay with my wife and children, and I'm going down with it. And uh, I'll be here warning people to the last minute, and uh, this is not Nazi Germany, this is not Russia, and these people will be... Uh, the Jews said the same thing, Alex, all the way to the end. They, they all were convinced that it couldn't get any worse, and that, uh, that somebody would... Uh, uh, save the day, and not, it didn't work, and six million were uh, burned and slaughtered and killed, and gypsies and Jews and homosexuals. Now in America, we got about 30 or 40 million people on the chopping block. They got to go. We can't feed them anymore. We don't have the money. We have too much debt, and we need the final solution, so they're going to get rid of them. And if the same people in charge then are in charge now. If you value your family, you need to get out. You now they're actually going to go after the middle class and rob everybody. That's actually what the Nazis did. Well, that's the beginning, though. First, you, the, the, these middle-class people are in the new poverty. They, they were middle-class last year. Now they're the poverty-stricken. And then, then they'll be called, you know, they'll scapegoat them. Like, they're the terrorists! You're the terrorists! You know, they get the propaganda machine running, and then they get the people who are not yet being marched into the incineration camp to hate them. Hate! Hate! And, of course, it'll all be for the greater But, community. I mean, it's such a joke. When you pull up to a checkpoint in the middle of the country and, the, and there's troops and cops and TSA potbellies directing them and they're bugging their eyes out at you and state police have got drill sergeant hats on with their eyes all slit looking at you like, like they're gunslingers. And you're there with your kids and they march over and order you around and I'm just, I can't take it anymore. I'm like, no, you're drug dealers. The government's criminal. I don't care anymore. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take them anymore. They're terrorists. They're murderers. They're drug traffickers. They're scum. They're Nazi commie absolute filth. And I see them and I'm calling them out. That's what I'm saying. Now, I predict this. Uh, that with a very short period of time, uh, you're going to find people tagged with the GPS monitor, which will be the equivalent of the Star of David. Remember, in Nazi Germany, they had to wear the yellow Star of David. They've already tagged signified. your cell phone, your name, your face scan. That's right. So isn't that the exact same thing as being tagged by Nazi Germany with the yellow Star of David? They have tagged you on your GPS monitor as an undesirable. That's another major step toward marching people into the Listen, incident. I was flying out of Austin a few weeks ago, and I thought it was a joke. A gray-haired TSA guy goes... One guy goes, hey, Alex, like your show. And I'm going, okay. And he goes, the other guy goes, this guy's a troublemaker and tried to intimidate me. And it was like a little kid, but they're acting tough. This guy's a troublemaker. And he did this look at me. You could tell the guy was just a sack of wheat garbage. And I just, I thought it was a joke. And I was like, huh? And he was like, yeah, where are you going? Like, and I was just like, <laughs> you are a sack of trash. You are a cowardly worm. You, you must have a hellish life. You can't get a woman. I guarantee it. You're a loser. And you'll always be a loser no matter what. Anybody says you were born a loser and you are a loser and you're an American filth. And we're going to take this country back and you're going to be brought to justice along with your banker bosses. <laughs> well, you know, the, the victims, uh, again, of Nazis were citizens of Germany. They were full-fledged citizens with a huge long-term <sighs> uh, history of adding to society, of fighting in the wars, being part of the community. But suddenly, because uh, the powers that be needed a bunch of money to fund their overseas military adventures, it wasn't Afghanistan. And Iraq or Bahrain or another, it was uh, Poland and uh, France and other at the time, and they needed that money. So they said, you know, we're going to seize all your money. We're going to put you a little star on your uh, arm or on your arm. And then uh, when we can't feed you anymore and get the slave labor from you, we can't feed our prisons anymore. We're going to incinerate you. Now, that's the exact progression we're going to see in the U.S. By the way, they admit months. Homeland Security has actually ordered giant body incinerators. That's been in the news. It was, well, in, the, it was in the. It was in the. It was in the. Weenie roast. What do you think they're going to cook their weenies out there and have a marshmallow roast? No, I'm not, I'm not joking. It was in the Rocky Mountain News before it closed down. It was about eight, nine years ago that Homeland Security they said for during bio attacks has ordered a bunch of big uh, industrial incinerators. 
look, there's too many people on food stamps in America. So 50 million, J.P. Morgan runs the program. Uh, they fund it through deficit spending. But as you know, J.P. Morgan's balance sheet's about to blow up. And the same thing with Goldman Sachs is about to blow up. This company, MF Global, that was run by an ex-Goldman Sachs guy, John Corzine, he leveraged the company up 50 to 1, blew it up. And, uh, yeah, but America's waking up. Europe's waking up. Berlusconi had to resign. Uh, I don't see them getting away with all of this. I think we should have faith here and stare them Who's down. Going to prison? Who's going to prison? Not, not nobody. Bernie Madoff, you know, he went, he went to prison. But other than that, unlike the 1980s, over 1,500 bankers went to prison thanks to William Black's uh, investigation uh, to putting those bankers behind bars. This time, the situation 60 times worse. And so far, we've had maybe one guy go to prison, Bernie Madoff. That's it. There's no FBI staffing doing this. When they were pursuing the SNL crisis, they had so over 2,000 FBI agents here. They've got less than 20 FBI agents, something on the order of that a scale. They're not even going after these guys. There's no retribution for these guys. They are laughing. You know, the traders in Chicago stick their head out the window at the Occupy Chicago movement. They throw applications to McDonald's down on their, on their uh, protests, not signaling that the CME and the Chicago Board of Exchange were caught last week red-handed, defrauding customers, commingling accounts, manipulating markets, stealing uh, egregiously from the system and from all their accounts. Uh, and this, these are the people that are telling the Occupy Wall Street movement on the street to go get a job. These people are committing massive fraud every single day. You've got I know, and now they're announcing they're going to crack down. I want to... He's a major fraudster, Gary Gensler at the CFTC. This SEC is caught and basically engaged in massive fraud every single what day. What about the announcement today? Let me stop you for a minute. Uh, it's coming out here in Reuters. Bank of America preparing for Chapter 11, and they say it looks like they may be preparing for it, and they've moved that $79 trillion in derivatives over to the FDIC, so I guess we're going to have to pay for that, but that's, that's not that's welfare. $79 trillion. That's right. That's $79 trillion in debt that's moved from the investment bank Merrill Lynch that took these outrageous bets that lost. They put it on to the taxpayer now to bail that out. That's what I'm saying, Alex. That's $79 trillion. The entire GDP of America is $13 trillion. How is the, third, I mean, the population is three hundred? And the cops don't care. The bureaucrats don't care. They think they're going to squeeze enough money out of the public to keep this going, and then they're going to wake up in a destroyed country. But right. they won't they care. They're still going to have that uniform and get they're to waddle around. Until they can't squeeze anymore, and then they're going to burn them. That's the end game. By the way, that's, that's in the, the news. Guess season. what's happening with this TSA? They're announcing they're going to lay off federal marshals and all these other people that are, from my experience, more professional, kindly, and trained. And people are actually commenting on this in the article, but I'd already seen it in the news. And they're actually hiring goon brown shirt TSA, but they're going to give them machine guns. They, they, they're not even sworn officers. They're going to start arming these little punks. Well, uh, I'd go long, uh, uh, you know, machine gun manufacturers and prison operators like Corrections Corps of America. On your show last year, I said buy the stock in the low teens. I think it's doubled since then. Yeah, it is. Take advantage of the casino gulag that is America. Buy these stocks that profit directly from the concentration camp. Uh, well, that's the next uh, thing. They're going to fire most of the cops. So just get ready for that. And they're going to have just nothing but just psycho guns running around. We'll be right back. Calls straight ahead with Max Kaiser. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sinus Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com.